back in 1990 I met Bill and what came with Bill was two young kids age five and age ten and up till then I never felt clucky at all but after a couple of years of having these two young stepkids I felt clucky so we decided well, I decided that I'd like to become a father so we joined with another couple and we had our young son who is now nearly 21 we decided we would apply for family cover between us and him because he didn't have family cover or any health cover on his mother's side. We approached NIB to put our names together as a couple to get family cover with him and NIB sent us a letter saying you are not eligible for family cover. So we then went to the Anti-Discrimination Board and put in a complaint anti-discrimination board approached NIB to conciliate it and they said we will not conciliate. So from there um, it was taken to the Equal Opportunity Tribunal and a hearing was set. It was a preliminary hearing and that was when the Equal Opportunity Tribunal um, deemed that we did have a case and NIB had to then show cause as to why they were discriminating against us. In the Equal Opportunity Tribunal, we had to prove financial dependence. Now, only us had to do that. No other couples ever had to prove financial dependence to NIB before. As if I had been a female and we'd gone along to apply, there wouldn't have been any issues whatsoever. They would have accepted our application and given us family cover. But because we were a same-sex couple, we had to prove financial dependence. So at the Equal Opportunity Tribunal, we had to put our life on public display. So our joint bank accounts, our joint mortgage, our joint ownership of the car, we had to show that if one of us wasn't working, the other would not be able to pay all of the accounts that we were joint owners of. And um, we won that case and they awarded um, costs to us equal to um, one year's family health cover. Once we'd won at the Equal Opportunity Tribunal, we thought it'd be all over. Um, but then NIB appealed and it was to go to the Supreme Court. And we knew that going to the Supreme Court was going to cost us an arm and a leg, basically. And um, we had no sort of funds to keep going. Luck would have it that um, we won in the Supreme Court. A homosexual couple has won a two-year battle with a major health insurer, forcing it to recognise them as a family. NIB had, I think it was actually a month to appeal yeah. after that, and they decided not to appeal. It got down to the point that if we had lost in the Supreme Court, we would have to have sold the house and um, raised money elsewhere to pay all our legal bills. So it was very stressful there. Um, not knowing whether or not we were going to have a house over our head the next day or not. Our final cost personally was around $15,000. We had support of the, the gay community in Newcastle who raised about $3,100 for us in two lots. Um, we went to our local credit union, which I was a member of at the time, to apply for a loan to pay for our legal bills. And each time we'd go to see them, they would ask, what was the reason for your loan? And we'd say, well, we're fighting NIB to get family health cover. And they immediately gave us the loan. Of course, you're putting your sexuality out there as a gay couple. The other two kids from Bill's first marriage, we hadn't told them because we didn't think that this case would get past page six in the Herald. We didn't imagine it would get page one in the Herald, or the Telly Mirror at the time, or the Age. And we didn't expect it to be as big on TV as what it was, as um, we were approached by the Today Show, and they interviewed us twice. And um, it happened to be the morning that um, my daughter and all her friends watched the Today Show instead of the cartoons. Um, so she had a lot of sort of flack from her friends. My father, who was alive at the time, is, is gone now, but his brother was getting abusive um, phone calls 
anybody with the same surname would get abusive phone calls by people obviously objecting and my father rang me up and said you've got to stop that and I thought well we can't stop this this is our life we're fighting for our rights throughout it all we were doing it for ourselves it wasn't until sort of probably at the end of the equal opportunity tribunal and the media was quite heavily involved the gay and lesbian rights lobby were there supporting us as well that it became more of a an, an issue for the wider community as we were sort of under the spotlight as to if we won it had a bigger um, impact on a lot more people's lives than just our lives. We hadn't thought of that at the time um, and it, it was quite a sort of stressful thing because the, the media did focus on us a lot during all that time and overall it, we did become very well known sort of throughout the gay and lesbian sort of political field um, as sort of trailblazers in getting further rights that should have been there anyway for other lesbian and gay couples.